believe this is the boy at the back of the class, chapter 23, Brendan the Bully and the Breaking News. There are some days that you never ever want to forget, like birthdays and school trip days and adventure days. And there are other days when you want to forget everything that ever happened. Like when a bully bullies you, or a grown up tells you off for doing something you didn't do, or when someone you love most in the world suddenly dies. And then there are roller coaster days. Those are the days when one moment you're so happy that you feel like it's your birthday, but then the next you feel so sad that you want to hide in your bed until everything is over. That Friday, the day after we had learnt about the worldwide whispers, was a roller coaster day. After the morning register, Mrs. Carn suddenly told everyone to leave their things on their desks because we had to go to an emergency school assembly. We only ever have an emergency assembly if something bad has happened, like a fight or if something's been stolen from a teacher. But Josie clapped her hands and asked, Do you think they've found Armit's parents already? That made my heart leap up and feel like it was flying. Maybe the emergency assembly was for that. So I looked over at Armit and gave him an excited wave. But the assembly wasn't for that at all. Mrs Sanders only wanted to tell everyone to be on their best behaviour, even the teachers, because the reporters surrounding the school were clearly not going anywhere anytime soon and had put the school firmly on the world's radar. Hearing this made everyone sit up straight, just in case there was a giant radar being beamed down from outer space to spy on us. Then Mrs Sanders said that that if anyone spoke to a reporter about me or Tom or Armet or asked us any questions about what had happened, the police would know and they might be expelled. This made everyone turn around and stare at us and I could hear Jenny saying loudly, See, told you it was true, they did break into the Queen's house. And someone else would reply, They should have worn a mask, then they wouldn't have been caught. But we didn't mind, and Josie and Tom even started acting like famous people and began waving at everyone. But as we were leaving the assembly hall, Brendan the bully pushed past us and whispered, Smelly refuge bag, at Armet, and Chris and Liam punched their fists into their hands, which meant they were going to beat us up. I thought we should tell Mrs Khan and Mrs Sanders right away, but Armet told me not to. He said bullies that just talk are better than bullies that actually punch because words don't hurt as much. I don't agree. Dad always used to say that words can hurt more than punches because when you get a bruise or a bump after being punched, it disappears after a while and you can forget all about it. But words can stick around for a long time and the meanest words stick around the longest. Tom didn't think Armit was right either and said we should pull down Brenda the bully's pants in PE. Josie thought we should save up all our pocket money and pay one for the bigger bullies to bully him for us. But then Michael said that bullying a bully was silly and that we should just ignore him. So that's what we all agreed to do. Except we couldn't. Because at first break, Brendan the bully started to do something which made me hate him more than anything I had ever hated in my whole life. Even Beetroot and Mr Ryan's. Mrs Khan says we should never, ever hate anyone because hating someone can eat up your insides and gives you heart disease. But sometimes you can't help it. And I especially couldn't help it when I heard Brendan the Bully and Liam and Chris singing the song they had made up. The song went like this. Arm at the refugee smells like poo, so we're gonna stuff him in a bag and flush him down the loo. I got so angry that as soon as I heard it, I shouted at them to shut up and leave Armet alone. And so did Michael and Josie and Tom. But that only made them sing it louder and louder and louder, which made Armet's face get redder and redder. I looked around for a teacher to tell, but Mr Irons was the only teacher I could see on duty. And I could see right away that he had heard Brendan the Bully's song too and wasn't going to do anything about it. He just stood and watched us with his nose in the air. By the time Brendan the Bully had begun to sing the song for the fourth time, I think all of us had forgotten what Mrs Sanders had said about everyone being on their best behaviour and the giant radar and about there being lots of reporters everywhere. Because suddenly, 
without even thinking about it, I made a running lunge for Brendan the bully and Tom and Josie and Michael did the same. We all crashed into each other and falling to the floor began punching, kicking Brendan the bully and Liam and Chris just as hard as we could. I think I must have been punched and kicked back too but I was so angry I couldn't feel anything. Ahmet stood frozen to, to the floor and watched us, not knowing what to do. But after a few seconds, he roared and jumping on top of Brent and the bully began to hit him as hard as he could too. The fight didn't last for more than a minute because a few seconds after we had all fallen to the floor, we could hear a whistle hurrying our way and clicking noises like camera buttons being pressed as lots of pairs of hands started to pull us away. We were marched into school and up the stairs and the next thing I knew, we were all standing in Mrs Sanders' office being stared at angrily by not only Mrs Sanders but Mrs Khan and Mrs Hensie too. I couldn't really hear what they were saying because my ears become so hot but I think I heard the words ashamed, never in the history of school and parents being said. We all got to detention for fighting, even Ahmet, but it wasn't all bad. When my ears had cooled down, Josie taught me that when Mrs Sanders had heard Brendan the bully's song, she had given him and Liam and Chris two weeks' detentions and said she would be calling their parents too. But as it turned out, Brendan the bully's punishment was more serious than even we could have imagined because by that very evening, Brendan the bully and Mr Irons was breaking the news. On every single channel and in all the weekend papers, headlines like videos of bully attacking refugee boy sparks outrage and teacher stands aside as school bully threatens refugee boy and school bully trash talks refugee child were everywhere so that by Monday morning the school was surrounded by even more cameras and reporters and vans with satellite dishes on their roofs than before. Brendan the bully and Liam and Chris didn't come into school for three whole days after they had broken the news. And when they did, their parents came with them and made them apologise to Armour in front of everyone at morning assembly. They still had to do detention every day for two weeks too. It made everyone glad they had been caught by the news people. Brendan the bully still looked at Armour with a horrible scowl on his face whenever he thought no one could see him. And one time in the lunch hall, he walked up right right up to Armet with his fists clenched as if he wanted to punch him. But instead of being scared, Armet just looked at him with his lying eyes and grinned. After that, friends and the bully never went near Armet again. And just when we thought things couldn't get any better, that week Mr Irons and his whistling nose disappeared too and were never heard of ever again. Boring Miss Stevens had to take over his class, which probably made them just as miserable as they had been before. But no one else really cared about that because now everyone was free to scream and laugh and shout as much as they wanted to at brave times again. So we did, except we all screamed and laughed and shouted louder and longer and harder than we'd ever done before. Because when you're playing with your friends and don't have any bullies to worry about anymore, that's exactly what you should be doing. <laughs>